Coming up, China City volunteers tend to victims of the recent violence attack in Kunming of Yunnan. We'll learn how Taiwan's geothermal energy can be just as useful as other forms of energy if put to good use. Welcome to Da Headlines, I'm Wendy Chen, thank you for joining us. First up in China's Yunnan, following the violence attack at the Kunming railway station, of the over 100 residents injured, many were sent to the First People's Hospital of Yunnan province. Among the three charity organizations allowed through the hospital store to care for the survivors has been the Tsiji Foundation. General Secretary Xi Jinping of the Communist Party of China leads the 12th National People's Congress in a three-minute silence to mourn the victims of the Kunming massacre. Although the incident is over, the pain has just begun. The First People's Hospital of Yunnan Province has not only taken in many of the victims, but is also the only facility to open its doors to charity organizations like the Tsiji Foundation. Tsuji's access is all thanks to the trust volunteers in the hospital have built up. The nursing department director here is full of compassion and is also involved in Tsuji's free clinics and often attends their study groups. One of the victims is a senior who originally could have escaped without harm. However, due to helping out another passenger, the senior himself fell victim to a knife wound. Though through it all, the senior remained upbeat. The senior is very optimistic. He said, it's nothing, he will recover. I think there should be more people like him in society. There should be a united effort to uplift people's spirit. Besides caring for victims, volunteers also provide a vegetarian snacks for doctors and nurses. Acknowledging the volunteers' efforts, the head nurse of the cardiology department vows to conduct a free medical training course to assist city volunteers in the future. Out of the 28 city volunteers in Kunming, half of them are involved in caring for the victims. Knowing the road to recovery will take at least half a month, city volunteers promise to be there every step of the way. It matters not if recovery takes half a month, a full month or longer. Our love will accompany them until the end. In the aftermath of Typhoon Haiyan in the Philippines, to help students continue their education, City Foundation built prefabricated classrooms in various regions. Knowing that there are still many schools in need of these classrooms, Taiwan City volunteers gathered at the Holy Liaison Office in Taizong, ready to build another 278 prefab classrooms. Preparing materials for building prefabricated classrooms, today Tsuji volunteers gather at the Tsuji Holy Liaison Office in Taichung, ready themselves for the month ahead. After we pinch roll the steel, it will be harder for us to expand them, and the site will be very sharp too. We will have to use another method to solve this problem. This time the design of the prefabricated classrooms is embedded with Tsuji's humanistic spirit. We have incorporated Tsuji's humanistic spirit on the roof. There will be more space inside and no blind spot in the building. The second generation of the prefabricated building will use a different kind of the polypropylene board. These PP boards have lines on them. We can also roll them according to our need. The new kind of the polypropylene board can be rolled into different size and shape to give more students in the Philippines a safe and comfortable study environment. In just a month, the volunteers plan to make a total of 278 prefabricated classrooms. In Thailand, as the Chiang Mai City School near its 10th anniversary, at this year's graduation ceremony, we meet one graduate, Cho Wei Ting, who was one of the first students to study at the Tsiji School. Here's her story. This footage is from nine years ago when classes first began at the Chiang Mai Tsiji School in 2005. With her hair tied up in a ponytail, Cho Wei Ting, a shy fourth grader at the time, was one of the first students to study at the Tsiji School. 
In a blink of an eye, Cho Weiting is no longer an elementary school student, but an outstanding and talented graduate. Cho's steady and calm nature came from years of studying under the city's humanitarian education system. Those studying at the Chiang Mai City School meant waiting had to spend more time away from home. It was a decision she did not regret making. At that time, I was very curious as to why my father sent me here to study. After coming in contact with Tsuji, I realized that the education I received here helped me experience life, made me more polite, and it will lead me to a better future. When I sent my daughter here to study, I was hoping she would gain language skills such as Chinese and English. In terms of other education directions, I didn't give it too much thought. At the 10th year anniversary of the Chiang Mai City School, students put on performances at the large-scale graduation ceremony to celebrate. She is a grandma's greatest strength. She will always help with household chores and assist her grandma to cook. At school, she is able to fulfill her duties as a student too. The close relationship with her family keeps the student motivated in realizing her dream to become a doctor. Someone once told me that becoming a doctor is not easy at all, and it requires determination, perseverance, and consistent hard work. To Cho Weiting, the Chiang Mai City School is not only her second home, but also a place where she will begin reciprocating the love to those in greater need. Just below the Earth's surface is an abundance of heat energy resources known as geos energy. This heat energy can be found almost anywhere, and Taiwan is rich in geothermal resources. Experts say that the potential of Taiwan's geothermal power is the equivalent to the power of 10 nuclear power plants. How do we unlock the potential of this heat energy? Let's find out in our next report. Steam rises from beneath the Earth's surface like a giant white dragon. <laughs> Indeed, geothermal energy can replace the burning of fossil fuels to generate electricity. Currently, Taiwan's only geothermal power plant is located in Qingshui Yilan. Beneath this 1,158-meter-deep geothermal well, hot water at a temperature of 183 degrees Celsius and steam is pumped to the surface to generate electricity. Hot water and steam enters the evaporator here. The evaporator is filled with a refrigerant. So when the hot water runs through, it will bring the refrigerant to a boil and then vaporize. The vapor expands and drives the turbine which in turn produces electricity. The Qingshui Geothermal Reserve can produce 50 kilowatts of electricity a day, the equivalent to the daily electricity consumption of 10 households. A geothermal charging station has also been set up for residents to charge their cell phones. This endless supply of energy is a gift from the Earth. Once electricity has been generated, the temperature of the water drops to 90 degrees Celsius and it is re-injected to the geothermal reservoir. We only utilize the thermal energy, not water resources, so we can ensure that there is a continuous cycle. This double-loop geothermal generator, which was invented locally, is very different to the model Taiwan purchased from Iceland 32 years ago. At the time, it was mostly hot water that came out of the shallow layers, with steam making up only 20 percent. Poor management and low power output led to the decommissioning of the power plant 12 years later, and geothermal development was brought to a halt. It wasn't until 2006 that the Industrial Technology Research Institute resumed its research operations. Geothermal power is a sustainable form of renewable energy. There is an endless and stable supply of it. 
the Earth is like a big storage of geothermal energy and temperatures at the Earth's core can reach 7,000 degrees. Each year, the heat that is released from within the Earth to the surface is equivalent to 16.8 billion barrels of petroleum or the power output of 10 nuclear power plants. Taiwan is located on the convergent tectonic plate boundary between the Eurasian plate and as the plates shift, there are numerous cracks when thermal energy can easily escape to shallow areas. That's why Taiwan is endowed with abundant geothermal resources. Richly endowed with abundant geothermal resources, the Da Tuan Volcano Group in Taipei, Yilan's Qingshui District, Nantou's Lushan and Zhiben Taidong are all blessed with this gift from the Earth. Unfortunately, as the cost to develop geothermal energy is much higher than fossil fuel nuclear energy, the natural resources buried beneath the Earth's surface remains untapped. Unlike fossil fuels, geothermal power plants emit no greenhouse gases, so it's considered to be a very pure and clean form of renewable energy. As we look around us and worry about the threats of global warming and climate change, right beneath our feet, however, lies a gift from the Earth's core that is waiting to be discovered. City volunteers worldwide regularly hold training seminars to cultivate their wisdom as well as for those who wish to join their ranks. In both Taipei of Taiwan and Sichuan of China, such training seminars were held where volunteers came together to absorb city's humanitarian spirit and dharma. Here at Taipei's Ciji Guandu Grounds, Ciji volunteers all listen intently as they take notes. A member asked if she could donate $1,080 a month. I said, of course, you can donate whatever you're comfortable with. I was so excited about going to the school to collect the donation that I couldn't wait until dawn. The lively presentation by various guest speakers successfully captures the 1,200 Chinese attention. In our community, after listening to the class, everyone will come to learn that there are some 10,000 to 20,000 volunteers accompanying the Northern District Training Seminar. Dharma Master De Chan from Hualien Stins Abode is also present to offer words of encouragement. <laughs> The training is for us to learn to cultivate our own minds and not judge others. So I hope we can all learn to cultivate ourselves and not argue with others. At the annual volunteers training seminar, senior city volunteers and Dharma masters all hope to pass on city's humanitarian spirit to participants. In China, Sichuan, just past 12 o'clock midnight, 34 volunteers from Chongqing arrived in Luosui to join in the upcoming training seminar. Though late into the night, volunteers prepare hot meals for their counterparts who traveled more than five hours to attend the event. Volunteers from Chongqing, Chengdu, Hanwang, Luosui and Dazhou are all present to absorb the Dharma and wisdom. I'm willing to follow city volunteers in attending every seminar. I hope one day I will be able to wear the city uniform. It is love and compassion that unite all volunteers together as they hope to make a difference in society through their actions. Also holding these training seminars have been volunteers in Taiwan's Guandu, Banqiao as well as Penghu, who came together to reflect upon their actions and fail to be more diligent in walking the city path. On Taiwan's offshore island of Penghu, local city volunteers gather at the Jingsi Hall for their volunteer seminar. For this special occasion, Ye Chiu Liang took a day off from work to participate. Before, one of our sisters would lead us, but now we can connect life to Hualien. This helps us greatly so we can correct our thoughts. Hualien is so far away from Penghu, but now we have this life feed so we can attend the study session to gain wisdom. Otherwise, we won't know what's going on. If we are not ill, then we should participate. Many volunteers here start the day with the dawn broadcast of the Master's teachings, then follow up with activities such as sutra chanting. Though 77-year-old 
Fan Huang Cui Ying has knee problems, she still partakes in the bowing during the chanting. When I forget to take my medication, then I won't be able to kneel down. When I can, I feel pleased to participate. Normally I don't have time to watch the master's teachings, but I feel good to have made time for it today. I've gained so much wisdom since this morning. There are not many city volunteers in Penghu, and because of this, everyone treasures the time together to gain as much dharma as they can. Meanwhile, at the Tsiji Banqiao grounds in New Taipei City, over a thousand Tsiji volunteers have gathered to study the 37 principles of enlightenment via a live feed from Hualien. Head of the housekeeping committee, Ye Shui Pen, goes around to thank each of the volunteers on her team for their assistance and gives each a small token of our appreciation. It is precisely because everyone in the Tsiji family has a heart of truth, compassion and beauty that I was attracted to this organization. Over at the Tsiji Guandu grounds, over 900 volunteers are here to share stories from their community and discuss solutions to their problems. To use the Master's wisdom to humble ourselves while letting others shine is the biggest fulfillment. 71-year-old Liu Xinzhu's leg surgery last year did not stand in his way of this chance to gain a piece of the Dharma. I will remember the key point of today's lesson and pass it on to others. Tsuji volunteers island-wide gather to attend such seminars so that they may pass on the Master's wisdom to all in the future. Among the city volunteers around the globe to join the initiative to watch Master Zinyin's wisdom at dawn broadcast is Jordan City volunteer Chen Qiuhua, who has been taking part since September last year. However, because of the time differences, Chen has had to stay up until 11.30 every evening to participate in the study group. Lighting candles and bowing to the Buddha at half past 11, instead of getting ready for bed, Jordan City volunteer Chen Qiuhua checks his internet connection to make sure everything is in order to watch the broadcast of Master Zhen Yin's teachings. Currently it's 11 p.m. and being able to watch the Master's teachings at the same time as everyone else is my fortune because the Master is my spiritual inspiration. I often remind myself to follow in the Master's footsteps as it pains me to think of the Master's age so I want to seize all the opportunities to gain wisdom from her that I can. There's a six-hour time difference from Jordan to Taiwan. Thus, when the Master goes live on the air at 5.30 a.m. Taiwan time, it is 11.30 p.m. in Jordan. However, Chen has persevered for the past half year in keeping up with this daily routine. If the Master at her age can teach us every day, being her disciples, how can we slack in our discipline? Even with the unstable internet connection, Chen sits upright and cross-legged to diligently listen to the Master's Dharma. Through it all, he has gained wisdom and strength to help him solve the problems he faces in being an overseas city volunteer. In the Middle East, most of our disasters are man-made. In Buddhist teachings, aunt Leia listens on worldly fortunes, the fight groups, and bloodshed. So I've come to realize that, while well, previously I worried about how few volunteers there are in Jordan, now after watching the morning teachings with the Master, I no longer think that. Instead, I think, it doesn't matter, if there is no one available, I will go. Despite the over 8,000 kilometers between Jordan and Taiwan, Chen's heart lies close with the Masters in Hualien and continues to shoulder some of the Masters' burden by safeguarding the less fortunate in Jordan. Moving to Hong Kong, city volunteers recently organized an environmental exhibition to raise recycling awareness among the general public and provide tips on how to live a greener lifestyle. At the event, several young people also tried their hands at sorting recyclables. Let's take a look. The sky is blue and the sun is shining. Children and adults of this community are having a great time. The Sun Wapeng Building Management Committee and the Tsiji Hong Kong Chapter jointly held an environmental exhibition. The booths set up by the volunteers address environmental concepts 
such as various categories of recyclables and recycling tips. Glass bottles and plastic bottles, it's great to learn about the recyclable items. We had a great time with our kids and learned a lot too. We hope to encourage everyone to practice recycling and lessen the amount of waste in Hong Kong. We also hope that there are future opportunities for collaborations with Tutti. Here in Hong Kong, several young people are joining the cause to save our planet, and this group of volunteers have taken it upon themselves to do the same. Our Earth is heavily polluted. There are no landfills in Hong Kong. So we really have to come up with a way to solve this problem. Apart from turning garbage into gold, changing our diet is another way to protect our environment. Adopting a vegetarian diet or using homemade eco-friendly detergent are steps to a greener lifestyle. We use eco-friendly detergent to wash our vegetables, clean the floor, or we'll get rid of bad odor at home. Actions to safeguard our planet should start now and we can begin by leading a greener lifestyle. In Taiwan's Kaohsiung, one kind-hearted person has been donating bags of rice to the Yotang police station every month to help those in need. And to help spread the love forward, these police officers decided to donate the bags of rice to the Huang Mu charity organization. These bags of rice here at the Yochang police station in Kaohsiung City were donated by an anonymous Good Samaritan. The person came from a poor family. Now that he's well off, he wants to give back to society. For the past 10 years, the Good Samaritan has been donating 100 bags of rice on a regular basis to help those in need. To spread the love forward, officers at the Yochang police station decided to donate the bags of rice to the Huang Mu charity organization. The Huang Mu Charity Organization prepares meals for the homeless, so we asked if it is okay to donate this rice to the organization instead. Our organization's philosophy is help and sympathy for the needy. We will use the rice as part of our hot meals for the homeless. At 10 in the evening, many homeless can be seen waiting in line for a hot meal. <laughs> to make sure the homeless don't have to sleep on an empty stomach, other than rice and vegetables, volunteers also prepare drinks, bread and fruit. <laughs> Police officers are also a part of the society. Other than working, we hope to contribute our share and help those living on the fringes of society. I'm here to help. If we have the ability, we should give back to society. To give back to society, other than donating goods, many also take time off from their busy schedules to deliver hot meals to more than 200 homeless three days a week. <laughs> Thanks to love from far and wide, these homeless hearts are now filled with warmth and happiness. We go to Indonesia at the end of the show and join team of members who carried out a free clinic offering dental and general medicine treatments to the students of the Nurul Imam boarding school. We'll leave you with these images. Thank you for tuning in. Goodbye.